Hey everyone, Saksham here back again with another video and in this video, we are going to learn hell lot about data extraction. And yes, this is one thing that is required in all the corporate today. And today, I did something amazing in order to make you understand about data extraction. So I'll tell you quickly about my research, what I did. So first of all, I wanted to know the data of the companies that have got the investors recently. I also wanted to know that on which date they have got the investment and I also wanted to filter them out that whether they are in series A of funding, series B or series C. Now uh, we all know that we can take, take that out from the crunch base but then for that we can get it for any individual company, not for the whole lot of list of companies. So now this thing was sure that I need a data set, a good data set of crunch base and there are two options now, either you can scrape them or either you can get a complete data set. So for that, like every layman, I just went on to google.com. So let me just open up. Uh, my Jupyter is also here side by side. So I already have, uh, you know, your Anaconda Navigator installed and make sure you have imported the pandas library before you are following this tutorial. So let me just go ahead and open up one more browser in which I can just uh, go on to Google and search for the data set of Crunchbase. So Crunchbase data set. So when I go ahead and look at for the data sets like here. So the first link is from Bright Data. I visited Bright Data to get the 2 million company profiles with a Crunchbase data set. Now this is amazing, right? Now uh, you can imagine that I wanted to get something like this only, a 2 million profiles in which I can extract the data on the basis of series funding and from where they have got the funding. This could be a gold mine to anyone out there. So now after this, I was also exploring more about Bright Data. Now they're giving amazing scraping solutions as well. For example, they also have Web Scraper IDE. They are giving the code for the JavaScript functions. And you know, they are giving a hell lot of code for the Python as well. So it's easy to go from all the corners. They're also giving a lot of proxy solutions. Now they're giving residential pro proxies, ISPs, mobile proxies. They are, you know, uh, playing around with proxy browser extensions. So th they're doing hell lot of stuff related uh, to something if you want to do related to data set. And if it's about data, I think Bright Data is doing, a, doing an amazing job out there. So I already logged into them. I requested them for a data set. So I, let me just take you to the user dashboard. So when you'll go onto the user dashboard, this will be the first screen uh, what you will see after logging in. Now you have proxies and scraping infra. Something that I was telling you a few seconds back, they have like amazing things out here, right? So they have web unlocker, residential proxies and a lot of that. But now we are more interested about the data set. So you have this column onto the left pane that says data set and web scraper IDE. Now I, I could have done that for, from the web scraper IDE as well, but you know, I just wanted to get the data set because I wanted to learn more about the data science and the pandas library, of course, because that is what is required for the data manipulation and to bring our data into the structured format, right? So we already have this file in here. Uh, I just downloaded it for us so that we can save our time, right? Okay, now we have it all here. Amazing, a big thanks to Bright Data as well because they are providing me with such amazing solution. I was about to start my journey. I have never done anything related to data science, but then, you know, they are just giving me a head start for this. So I thought, why not to learn about it? All right, so make sure you already have your Anaconda Navigator installed before you uh, follow this tutorial and make sure you have imported the pandas library. So let me just go ahead and launch my Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so my Jupyter Notebook is right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on new Python 3 file. All right, so now this is going to be the most exciting part of the tutorial because here we are going to write the code, which is going to be the important part here. So first of all, I am going to import pandas. That is the most powerful data manipulation and analysis tool. Now uh, it is usually used for handling the structured data, right? So I'm going to import pandas as PD. Next up, I'm going to import time. Now, when I import the time, uh, now it is going to provide various functions for working with time related operations, such as measuring the execution time of the operation, right? So that's uh, why I imported the time module, right? So after this, I am going to define a variable that is going to be start. Now it will be used later for the calculation of the execution time of any specific operation, right? So let's go ahead and define the variable start and then, uh, you know, bring it into the time module, right? 
After this, now this is going to be a very important part because it is related to data. Now we know that our data is in a CSV file. In order to bring that CSV file, we need to define the path of that CSV file. And before we define the path of that CSV file, we need to load that file inside a variable. Now the variable in this case is going to be data, right? Now I want to read CSV file and I want to create a data frame. So for that, I simply need to write pd dot read underscore csv now with this i can read the csv file but not yet i need to define the path of that so in this case i'm going to give the exact location so we can just have a look at here we have this data.csv file which is of 810 mb of course it is going to be a bigger file because it has the data set of 2 million companies now the thing that i need to notice that it is inside this pc and inside the PC, I'm uh, putting it inside the local disk E. Inside local disk E, I have the folder named as Python. Inside this folder, we have this file named as data.csv. All right. So I'm going to go back on to my Python 3 file. All right. So next up, uh, you know, I'm going to define the path right here. Right. So that is done after R single quote. And then I'm going to define the path that is going to be uh, let's say it is an E drive and Windows user. We are familiar with using the backslash and inside the Python folder backslash again inside the Python folder. We have a file named as data.csv, right? Let's go ahead and close it down. All right. So this looks cool to me. Uh, very easy to import the CSV files uh, using the pandas library. Thanks to such amazing li libraries out there. All right, so next up, I am going to define few more variables so that I can uh, check about the starting time end time and all the data that is loaded out there, right? So uh, let's go ahead and write it in that way that we it is easily readable to everyone out there, right? So let's go ahead and use the print function. And now what I want to display neatly is file loaded, right? So uh, I also need to define that how much time this file took, right? So I'm going to write here as this operation took and uh, how much time is there so i'm going to define that with uh, time dot time function right now this is going to calculate the time taken to load the csv file by subtracting the start from the current time right so now i am going to uh, you know uh, start it as well right so let's go ahead and uh, go with the start time and i also need to define it with the exact precise seconds that how much time it took, right? So this is what it is going to print actually. So suppose it is going to be like file loaded. This operation took this much of time or this much of seconds, right? So for that, I'm writing this. So let me just go ahead and recheck this print and then file loaded. This operation took time dot time and then I'm going to subtract it from the start time and then i am going to display the seconds right here looks great now after this i am going to talk about the data shape now the data shape is also really important uh, it is used for the data frame and it is used for representing the rows and the columns right so for that i need to print the number of rows and columns right so i am simply going to write here as data shape right and after this, I am going to write data dot shape so that the attribution returns as a tuple and it is going to contain the data frame, actual data frame. So this, this code looks neat to us. And here we have not done anything. We have just imported the pandas library. Then we have imported the time module. And then we already defined the start uh, variable right here with time dot time, which is what we are printing it right here. And we have just given the data a path of CSV. So let's go ahead and try to run this code and let's see how it goes. So let's wait for a few seconds and let's see what we are going to see. All right, now you can see the prompt is right here that this file is loaded and this operation took 12 seconds. Now 12 seconds is a very good time, uh, but we can, uh, you know, make this time lesser and to the upcoming seconds, we'll just have a look at that. So you can see that our time is also defined right here. Also, our data shape is defined at how many rows and columns are there. 
Now this looks neat to me. Now what if I want to see that what are the columns that are right here. So for that I am simply going to write as data dot columns. Now what will this do? This will uh, give the output of the column names uh, of the data frame that we have loaded through CSV, right? So I'm simply going to write as data dot columns. So let's go ahead and run this. Wow, that was really quick. So now you can see that we have a lot of index of all the columns that are right here. This looks exciting and this is getting easier as we are writing the code. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second part of this code. Now I've defined it into three parts. In first we have loaded the file. In second we are going to do the actual data extraction. Now before we do the actual data extraction we need to learn about two more things that is the use calls and second is the chunk size. Now let's first of all talk about the use calls which is an uh, optional parameter for specifying a list of column to include it in the data frame. How is that I am simply going to define here as use calls but first let me just separate it with a comma. So what I'm going to write here is use calls equals and then into the square brackets I'm going to define that which of these columns I am going to use in this case. Okay, so let's make it a very good neat list out there or into the CSV. So first of all, I am going to extract their name, the name of the company so that I can actually understand that when they have got the funding and which company is talking about which round of the funding. Okay, so first of all, I am going to define name in between the double quotes. Now I can define few more uh, columns here. So let's say I am going to talk about funding round list. Okay. So let me just copy this and I'm going to paste it into the same fashion and I'm going to separate it with comma. You can also see number of employee profiles or maybe let's say funds raised. And again, I'm going to extract it and let me just separate it with comma. Okay, so let me just define the funds raised. So this is just for an example, you can define pretty much everything that is written over here as per your needs. So this is how you use the use calls. Now, this looks great to me. But the second part that I'm interested in is about the chunk size, like I told you, which will reduce your execution time as well. So let's go ahead and define the chunk size. So uh, when I say that I'm going to define the chunk size, so I can let's say, I'm going to define the chunk size. And let's say that each chunk will have a maximum size of let's say 50,000 rows. Okay, just for an example. So I'm just going to write let's say 50,000. Okay. So this looks good. And let me just close down the parentheses that I've opened up in here. And uh, uh, this is here by mistake. Okay, so let me just close down the chunk size. So this looks good to me. I have defined the use calls, I've defined the name, funding down list and the funds raised. Okay, next up, uh, let's go ahead and we need to do few more things here that we need to start a for loop. Now, this will iterate the code over the chunks of data that that you know, my for loop will be reading from the CSV file. And by this I can enumerate the functions to obtain the index into the actual chunk of data. You'll understand about it more when I will read the code related to it. So let's go ahead and let's say if I'm going to start a for loop for index and chunk, like I said, to enumerate the data. Right. And let's say if IDX or you can say index is zero that is uh, defining actually it is going to print the first chunk using the print function each chunk represents a subset of the data from the CSV file. Okay, so if that is done, it is going to print the first chunk print the chunk else it is going to break. Right. So this looks good to me else block is executed when the condition is IDX zero that if that is not met, which means that means first chunk is already processed in this case. Now the else block is executed when the condition is IDX zero that is not met, which means that the first chunk has already been processed. 
now in this case it breaks out the loop using the break statement okay so this looks good to me so let's go ahead and run it and see how it goes all right so you can see we are getting a pretty neat list out here and the output is really very fast like we improved the time to let's say 5.x seconds which is very very fast exactly uh, the half of the time that we took uh, for the first time this looks great this completes the second part of this code now uh, we i'll just give you a quick refresher we have just defined few more things into the data variables we have used the columns that we were looking for we have reduced the chunk size to improve the time that we can see here right and we have also executed the for loop to you know get the chunks running up and break them up when the situation is not met okay so this was the second part now let's go ahead and jump on the third part of this code now uh, i'm just going to bring this code once again and i'm going to make the last change so that we can export the csv file for the data that we have extracted not the complete csv file we don't require the complete csv file we just need the data that we have extracted using use calls that means just the name funding round list and the funds that is that is raised but for that we don't need this piece of code so i'm just going to close it down right here okay so next up i am going to uh bring data dot to now to what csv where and where can we export it we can export it at the same place but just we'll change the name and with the same methodology uh, we are just going to export it okay so inside the parentheses you can export it but right now you can uh, let's say change the name to modified data csv okay so this looks good to me and also let's go ahead and define the encoding to utf8 like we all know and let's give the index to false so that it doesn't mess it up so index to false correct so now this is how you export the data that is required to you into the csv okay so this looks good to me need to me Mm okay everything looks good to me so let's go ahead and export the data that is only required to us the final step of this code so let's go ahead and execute this and let's see uh, what we are about to receive all right so the file is loaded and this operation took 7 seconds only now we are more interested in the file that we have received as the modified version so hey here is the file that says modified data dot csv and you can see the modified data dot csv is right here where where you have received the data that was required to you uh, that means just their name funding round list and funds raised so this is a way how you can extract the data and whether it is a like 800 mb csv file or maybe it is in gbs but if you will define the chunks pretty well it won't take much time and you can extract any data you want which is really very wonderful So this was a quick tutorial on how to extract the data and not to forget that I was able to make this tutorial because I got a perfect data set from Bright Data and I was really impressed to realize that people can use Bright Data for a lot of data science projects it is just a gold mine that you need to use but I hope you enjoyed this video I hope you liked this video if you loved it please let me know about it into the comment section but that's it for this video see you again tomorrow with another video